great to be here. Thank you, Wikimedia Mexico, for organizing this and bringing us here to Mexico City. This is amazing. And today, I want to talk to you a little bit about what I've learned over the last year and what I've experienced being part of this incredible movement. Um, so last time we met was um, at Wikimania London. Um, and I've spent the last year, of course, doing a lot of work with, at the Wikimedia Foundation, but even more importantly, listening and learning about what is important to our community, to you, and to the world as a whole. So I really spend my time and, and my job listening and, and uh, traveling around the world uh, to learn as much as possible about what you need. And I've spent my time uh, with Wiki Arabia, with Wikimedia Israel, with in conference in Berlin with all of us, our, affi our affiliate members. With Levant User Group in Ramallah, in Poland. And when I couldn't be there in person, I was there virtually in Mexico. And the one thing that stood out for me is that we're all very, very different. We're all unique, incredible individuals, but we are all here for one very important thing. We are open communities of knowledge seekers, builders, and, and sharers. And I mean that word really broadly. I mean it to include everybody in the world who is looking to share knowledge in this incredible environment called Wikimedia and focus on our very important mission, a world in which every human being can share in the sum of all knowledge. It is in our very DNA. It is in our roots. That is what brings us together. As different as we are across the world, that is what unites us. That is what makes us bigger than the sum of our parts. But the most puzzling thing for me was going back and figuring out what is it that really worked? What was it at our roots that made us who we are, that make, made us come together? What was so special when Jimmy started this in Florida? So I went back to my personal experiences. I grew up in, uh, in Moscow, in big city, but every summer I spend uh, tending an orchard, an apple orchard, in suburbs of Moscow. And tending a tree or tending another life form and watching the raw materials of sun, water, and earth bring together an incredible fruit, a garden, is, is, and giving something to something else is an incredible experience. Here in Mexico and where I live now in San Francisco, we do similar things, but instead of apple orchards, we often um, work on wine, um, wine orchards. We grow wine. And wine is really interesting in the same way. When you first plant an orchard, within the first couple of years, it produces an incredible amount of fruit. It's, it's, in fact, it's so much fruit and it bears so much of it that it starts to overpower the wines. It will break the wines if you don't start uh, trimming it. Wikipedia is the garden, the orchard of knowledge. And when, it, when we first started it, when we first came together to, to nurture this orchard, the same amazing thing happened. It rapidly flourished. And it wasn't just that we brought the encyclopedia online. That was, of course, really important. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't that it just was free. A lot of things are now free in the world. The, the most important part, and within the first year, it showed the 20,000 articles were created, but they weren't created just because they were free. They were created because the encyclopedia was open, open for every human being to share in and write their own voice, write their own line and then in this incredible book of knowledge. This open for all, this open for ubiquitous participation of every human being is what, to me, made it really different, what made it really special. You gave the world a new way to access knowledge and a way, new way, an absolutely unique new way to create it. And to this day, we give everybody around us a voice and a place to nurture and grow this tree of knowledge, 
so more people can join this amazing community, so more voices, more different voices can join. And within a year, it grew so rapidly that all of these languages emerged. That's how many languages were there by the end of the very first year. That is remarkable. That orchard, that garden flourished, flourished immediately and really quickly. But like winemakers that blend unique varieties of blends, we mixed up the knowledge of different types of cultures, of different people, of different uh, locations around the world, but also different varietals. It could be science and art. It could be cultural. It could be historical. But with all of that, all of that knowledge came from the same rootstock, uh, root that same belief that knowledge should be free and it should be creative, co created collaboratively. So I reflected on my listening hours and listening tours and talking to every single one of you. I realized how much the experience continu continually brought me back to this root of our movement. Every human, open, free channel on the internet, unique in that way, and all of us, as different as we are, united behind this idea of free knowledge. We are the root that feeds all of these knowledge forms coming from all places, people, institu cultural institutions, digital devices, programs everywhere. But we have been here for the last 15 years, and the world, the world is changing very rapidly. It's changing all around us, and we are changing as part of this world. The generations that are coming online today are different in the way they interact with knowledge than the generation that was there 15 years ago, in some ways. The root, however, is still different. So just like, like winemakers who have been growing their wines in Europe for hundreds of thousands of years, they're cultivated by generations, one generation handing over that knowledge to the next on how to cultivate the garden, or how to cultivate the vines. And over the years, the winemakers perfected how to blend those, those wines together, just like we are perfecting how to blend the knowledge. And when the wine starts to, <clears throat> starts to mature, the winemaker doesn't discard the old wine, the winemaker actually brings a new shoot and, and grafts it and puts it and joins it with the old root. And that's what makes the wine stronger. That's what, that's what perpetuates the, the, great, uh, the great wine that they, had, um, that they had before. Similarly, we have this root of knowledge, but we are in a space where we need to start grafting new types of knowledge and bringing new voices into, this, into our incredible community. We need to start nurturing the voices that are going to take it to the future for the next thousand years. So the big differences that I'm talking about that we all know are all around us are the people who are coming online today. We know that the, with rapid digitalization of the world, another five billion people will come online within the next 10 years. In Mexico alone, only about 40% of the population, is, connect, population is, is connected today. That will rapidly change. We need to think about the people who are going to be there sharing in our knowledge tomorrow. The next generation of users are also interacting with knowledge differently because they have different tools. Uh, they're much faster and they, they learn differently. The knowledge creation is changing because now in areas where before we couldn't document knowledge very well, we can't do it. We can do it directly. We can do it with our phones and, and cameras. Knowledge formats, of course, are changing as well. There's much more vi uh, video, multimedia, and, and, uh, and voice. And most importantly, the one thing that you have really changed is you brought the institutions on board with us. You brought libraries and, and uh, archives and universities to participate. And they're now not only willing, but they're eager to help us in our quest. So what we've done at the foundation uh, over the last year, and we started this was a year-long conversation, 
we started the strategy consultation. When I, when I came on board, the board told me, Lila, your top priority is to get this strategy thing organized. And as we started to think about it, we realized that strategy isn't something that just comes into a vacuum. Strategy is something that we need to build together. So we've done a lot of external and internal research. We looked at what's happening in the world. Of course, you have to do that. But most importantly, we've done a public conversation with all of you and with not just Wikipedians who edit, but Wikipedians who read, with our, with our readers, uh, with, with uh, organizations who uh, come around to, uh, to join us, uh, both in producing knowledge or in, uh, as donors. We talk to so many people to understand where should Wikimedia go. In fact, not, not only have we done that, but it became such a unique thing that researchers around the world started studying an open strategy process. So uh, online alone, this was our online consultation that we've done um, over the period of, uh, late in the spring, over a period of a few weeks. We've received over 2,000 comments, uh, over 1,000 people participated directly, but what is really important is we, our team spend a lot of time really focusing to, uh, on making sure that people from different countries and different languages participated. So as a result, 86 countries participated in this conversation, and uh, over, over 15 languages were translated, and 29 languages the conversations were happening. And if you look at it as a map, you can see how much of the world we have covered. This is remarkable. This is really incredible. So what did you tell us? You told us some things that we, of course, expected. That mobile is important. Citations are important. Improved editing is important. Content quality and translations. Those of you who edit, these are the things that, that are meaningful to you. And of course, that feeds into what we just talked about. In fact, all of these things we're actively working on, and I'll give you a little bit of a preview on what, uh, what we have done so far this year. But what is extremely interesting, even more interesting to me, is um, the fact that bureaucracy and climate came up as one of the top items on, uh, on, our, um, on our consultation. And this is, this is, these are the items that came in from our editor community. And somebody pointed out to me, and this is the article that you see in front of you from the New York Times, one of the first articles that New York Times has published on Wikipedia back in 2001. And Wikipedia here is called out as collegial. And collegial is, uh, is a word that describes actually somebody who is very polite and friendly and, of course, intellectual all at one. Again, I want to take this notion of going back to our roots, of where we started and reminding us that that is what brought us here. And this is, the, this is something that we should not forget. So some of the things that we've been thinking about is how to bring that spirit of collegiality back into the Wikimedia movement. But what, another interesting piece is that a lot of people who participated in the conversation were first-time users. And, and in fact, they created their, um, their user identity in order to converse with us. So um, from that group, we could really distill what's important to our readers, what's important to people who just start participating with knowledge. And as they, they become more and more engaged, what, what is that that they're looking to do? So some of the things that came up here is rich and immersive multimedia. Of course, it's, it's now such a big part of our digital life. Modern UX, not surprising here. Um, this is something that, um, that uh, the readers have been talking about for, for a while. Of course, mobile experience. And hold your breath here, social integration. Okay, don't kill me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't boo me on the board. This is, this is not coming from, um, uh, I didn't invent this. This is something that our readers are asking for. Uh, translations, of course, and language capabilities. 
Interestingly enough, we have different desires coming from, uh, from those who edit and those who, uh, who consume, and, and we need to find a way to marry those because those people who are coming online and who are joining the conversation now need the tools and need different ways to communicate in order to join us in, in contrib contrib contributing to knowledge. So just like the wines in the garden, just like our, um, our incredible um, winemakers and the vineyard that, that, uh, that we are talking about, uh, we need to make sure that we come back to those roots. We come back to where we started, come back to the things that made us who we are, so that we remind ourselves of the way that we worked and continue to focus on that kind of collaboration, on the kind of inclusiveness of the voices that we have always had and do have now, and, and support that type of work together. We have an incredible opportunity, but we also have an incredible responsibility to the world. And we need to make sure that what we've created over the last 15 years is sustainable, is sustainable for that thousand of, thousands of years that we can tend this, this garden. So we need to ensure that we can uh, fertilize it and, make, and, and tend it so it can grow. And the next generation, they love us. They have a hunger to engage. They want to be part of, this, of our incredible community. They want to expand it. Here's the quote that we've got as part of this consultation. Hello, Wikipedia. I really, really love you. I have not much to offer or help, but at least all I can say is a big thank you. You are like a teacher to me. I found you all by myself because I have a thirst for knowledge that, I can't, be stop, that can't be stopped. And you are one of those who is giving it to me. Sometimes I like to add my story, but I am not a famous person to be a part of you. I only can be part of your students and enjoy using you. Hopefully, someday I can be a great help. This is a student, a middle school student, uh, somewhere in the world. And the two things that are so near and dear to my heart is the thirst for knowledge, but also their thinking, her, his thinking, that he's, he can't participate. And this is, the, this is the very thing that we need to transform. We need to give, give this generation, we need to encourage this generation to believe in themselves, to believe that they can, and that they do not need to be, like all of us, here, Wikimedians, famous person. In fact, they can be a famous Wikimedian if they join. So we need to give this generation modern tools, but also helping hands in order for them to join this incredible movement. So from, but let's, let's back up a little bit and talk about where is WMF going? What have we done to help any of this? And we have a big role to play, even though we're pretty, well, we're fairly small. In, in the global thing, uh, scheme of things, we're a small organization supporting this huge, incredible uh, movement that you guys made. But we try to make the best of it. And we're learning, and we're getting better. Just like I'm talking about all of us, our focus needed to come back to the knowledge, to why we're here and what we're here for. So we, we too, needed to focus on our vision. And early this year, back in February, we put into place what we call the call to action. We said, it's pretty clear. We do two things. We are two things. We're technology and communities. And we need to make sure that we do two, those two things well. We support our communities well, and we create technology both for our current communities and for generations to come in order to create the next wave, the next level of innovation that is needed for, uh, for you and for those who are joining you. So how do we get ready? We have a lot to do on the technical side. And we're just scratching the surface today. And our problems are difficult because our scale is enormous. So one of the things that you brought up 
uh, in your consultation was the ease of citation. And this is one of the tools that we've uh, doubled down and the team built earlier this year to make those, that particular process much, much easier. Again, it's just a start, but this is something that will make your life much better. We're also investigating, a we're doing a lot of research. And one of the things that we realize we need to do is we need to make the busy work that goes into building Wikipedias much simpler, much easier, so you can focus on the really, on the more complex generative human work that needs to be done. So earlier this year, we did two things. One is actually in play today. We, uh, we've worked on a project called RevScore. Please go to, the, uh, to Aaron's session. He can tell you more. Um, all of this is focused on qualifying and quantifying the, the, how high of a quality of content has been produced by each edit. This is something that, as a community, we've been talking about for a very long time, but we're now doing it. And the results are astounding. So if you look at the human reassessment, and this is the tool that already has been deployed in, uh, in the medical uh, community, it reduces human impact by about 92%. This is enormous. This means that all of this work that's, that was going into this can now go into creating new articles, into building new knowledge. There's another project, a project underway and is currently in beta and in testing that, uh, that helps you detect bad edits. Some of you know there are about 700,000 uh, edits that just go through uh, on a daily basis. So 93% can be automatically detected with high accuracy. Again, reducing that number to about only 21,000. Again, very, very important for those of you who are working on curation of Wikipedia, again, so that you can spend your time engaging with new users or uh, creating new knowledge. And of course, mobile. Two mobile apps were shipped earlier this year, uh, last summer, both on iPhone and uh, Android. But none of this is meaningful without a healthy and vibrant and happy community, or as happy as, as the community of our side can, can be. But I believe we can be happy, we can be united, and we can be together. So one of the things that we've done this year is pull together all of our community resources into one big team focused on what our communities need today or tomorrow, and really starting to build um, capabilities around this to make sure that we can, we, we're ready for you. You have a lot of needs and we need to meet them better. So one of the things that we've done, we worked on this for a whole year. The recent elections, congratulations on the new board, by the way. We've put more work in this uh, than we've ever done, and it was really a collaborative effort. Again, it was an effort that was between our community members and the WMF. We've done a lot of work here, and I won't go through all of this, but really from board of trustees and volunteers all the way to uh, you, Wikip Wikimedians, of course, and almost nearly all of us at the Wikimedia Foundations have uh, taken a part in this. Uh, there's the, all the projects on the right, uh, what we had to do to make this work, to make this easy, and, and, and uh, to make this uh, successful. The goal that I set in front of the team earlier this year, because I really like creating crazy goals, uh, was uh, um, to beat our largest turnout, which was in 2013. So every day during the election, I kept asking our team, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And they, you know, they set the expectations low. They're like, no, Lila, I don't know if we can get there. You know? And then one day, I get this raw email. This is what the turnout in the election this year looked like. This is what we are able to do together when we engage. This is just a microcosm of our ability to come together and to really drive engagement and to move move the needle on participation. This is a micro example, 
The real question is, can we do this as a community in large? Can you do this when it comes to knowledge? I believe we can. So when those two come together, when our communities and our technology come together, we create incredible innovations. And again, we're just now starting to listen and feed the innovations that are out there. In fact, they're mostly coming from listening to you, listening to our communities, listening to our readers, and watching what is happening uh, in, in the projects that you create. So one of the things that was important to, uh, to all of us is the content translation. We are a highly international project. So we put a small team on, a uh, very capable team on this project. And as you can see, it's been yielding pretty incredible results. As we're starting to scale this, and now uh, content translation is in beta across all Wikipedians, we grew month over month, you can see in March, it was 700 articles. In June, it was over 8,000. This is, this is great. <laughs> this means we can close the content gaps across Wikipedias. We can grow all languages. And the fact is, that English, most people believe that English is a superset. No, it's not. It's not, it doesn't include everything that's out there. English is lacking a lot of content that is present in other Wikipedias. And other Wikipedias, of course, lack some content too. So this, this is a tool to make sure that the world knows about our culture that we can translate into different languages. We can share our background, our experience, our knowledge with the rest of the world, even if that world does not speak our, our language. And on top of that, we started an experiment. And please attend Layla's sessions. And she'll, uh, she will tell you a little bit more about that. We started an experiment around engagement. So what we've done with the translation tool, we started reaching out to users and saying, hey, we know that you're editing, you're interested in this, uh, in this type of article, so that you're interested in the subject matter. Would you like to translate an article in that? And before even tuning the algorithm, we know that we can increase engagement by nearly twofold if we do things like that, if we remind people, if we engage people proactively. So imagine what we can do in terms of ensuring that we we bring that content that we're talking about, the, trans the, the content that comes from different cultures and languages, online. So on average, a personalized recommendation, something that's fairly new to us, increases this translation activ activation, translator activation rate. So more people will translate. Oh, nearly twice as many people, uh, twice as many articles will start getting created if we do something like this. So this is another thing that we're experimenting with and, and trying to figure out how we can do these things to help you, uh, to help you, to make it easier for you to engage and do your incredible work. So experimentation and adaptations are very important to what we do. We have the biggest job to do yet. We'll, we have to test, we will sometimes fail, and sometimes succeed. So we have to have some tolerance to, towards the small failures and small successes and scaling on those successes. Because that's the only way that we can learn and adapt. And I use we really broadly. In fact, I'm constantly corrected. So I say we all the time and I talk about all kinds of things Wikipedia and Wikimedia. And oftentimes people correct me and they're like, you think you mean WMF. And I never think that there is distinction between the WMF, our sister organizations, and our community. Because we're all in this together. We're all in this for knowledge. So our, while we may do, may be doing different things on a day-to-day -day basis, we have different focus, different responsibilities. At the end of the day, we are a big we. We are all in this together 
because we have one unifying vision to make the sum of all knowledge shareable and accessible and available to everyone. To make this root from which all we grow, from which we all grow, support much larger community. So I have some us for all of us, including myself. I think we need to be bold. That is part of our root system. We're gonna break some things. We're gonna break some of our own rules, but without it, we're not gonna be able to grow. So let's really be bold. Let's try some, something, something that we have not tried before or that we have tried before and forgotten. So let's look at complexity of the limitations on content types that we, we put in place. Let's look at delicionism. Let's look at the behaviors on the site and let's step up and say, hey, this is not us. This is not how we do things. Let's do it differently. Return to open. This is really important. For a project that is the most open project in the world, I'm going to dare you to get more open. We have so many things to, to add to this. We have structured data, we have video, we have textbooks, we have journals. We can open our ecosystem up even more than ever before. More voices, more types of information. When you work, focus on the things that you really love. Let go of things that you can't spend as much time on. So if you are a designer, focus on the pixels. If you are a content person, focus on the content. But don't try to do it all. Because then it's really hard for the people who do work on something specific to get their work done. Unite and integrate your work. About two-thirds of the knowledge that is on our sites today, and this is directly on our sites, is not channeled through, is not available directly on Wikipedia, which is the gateway into our ecosystem. So we need to be thinking about that. How do we surface? How do we feed this new wines, this fresh wines, these other projects? How do we make them stronger? How do we support them better? How do we ensure that they grow? And finally, embrace diversity and nurture newcomers. They are different. This generation, every generation is. But they're also us. These are the students from uh, um, Herzliya, I'm sorry, uh, in middle school in, in Israel. These are the kids that are writing Wikipedia for their class. And the light in their eyes and the excitement in their voices are palpable. These kids want to do this. We need to embrace them. We need to embrace these voices. We need to embrace this generation. And we, do, and we, and we need to give them this collegial environment, this warm embrace, the help that they need to be part of us, to be part of our community. So let's take their vine, take our roots, and let's make sure that all of this growth can happen on them. Let's make sure that we have this incredible garden for another thousand years. Let's take our Wikipedia and sister projects, let's turn them into this engine of open knowledge by bringing together all of the communities, all of the lovers of knowledge, of open knowledge that are there. They are there, they're knocking on our doors. Let's make sure that they're with us so that every human being can indeed freely share in the, in the sum of all knowledge. Thank you.